This is the Straight Truth Podcast, biblical answers to difficult questions from a Christian worldview. All right, Pastor, I want to ask you about a scripture text specifically, something Paul brings up in 1 Timothy 1, 19 through 20. And in that text, he says that some people have actually shipwrecked their faith. And then he mentions these two men, Hymenaeus and Alexander specifically. So that's the question after you read the text. Can Christians actually shipwreck their faith like these men? What does that actually uh, mean? Is that applying to Christians or non-Christians? Mm. I wonder what your thoughts are on a text like that. Well, the warning, obviously, in First Timothy is, is entrusted to, a, to churches, so it's entrusted to believers. Mm-hmm. The warning instructs all of us something to be aware of, something to be on the alert to, something to make sure that we're not characterized by. You know, the warnings passages of the New Testament are addressed to believers, and it's not because believers actually end up shipwrecked. I believe the shipwrecked in this context are unbelievers, false teachers. Okay. But God preserves His people Mm -hmm. because through these warnings, we're kept in the faith. We're alerted. I mean, God's at work through His Word, by His Spirit, keeping us on the right pathway through warnings like this. Say it another way, believers will heed this warning. Mm -hmm. Unbelievers will disregard this warning and then eventually be, you know, a shipwreck as a result. What they've claimed to believe, they swerve from. What they've claimed to believe, they ultimately walk away from. Hmm. And when they do that, you know, 1 John 2, 19, becomes evident that they were never of us. For if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. Mm-hmm. Hymenaeus, Alexander, obviously at one time purported to be teachers of the truth, but they have swerved out of the way. It's interesting, Josh, verse 18 says, this charge I entrust to you, Timothy, my child, in accordance with the prophecies previously made about you, that by them you may wage the good warfare holding faith and a good conscience. By rejecting this, some have made shipwreck of their faith. And then he mentions Hymenaeus and Alexander. So he's exhorting Timothy to exhort others to hold on to faith and a good conscience. Mm -hmm. Faith having to do with truth, good conscience having to do with the consistent application of truth. Hold on to the truth and make sure you're applying it in every realm that God has designed because if you either swerve from the truth or you hold to it, but you're not living it, you're not applying it, you're swerving from it internally and behaviorally, the result is you end up, what becomes evident is you were never a believer. Because if you go back to the um, third verse, as I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus so that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine, nor to devote themselves to myths and endless genealogies which promote speculations, rather than the stewardship from God that is by faith. The aim of our charge is love that issues from a pure heart and a good conscience and a sincere faith. Mm. So there are those two elements, again, faith and conscience, right? A sincere faith and a good conscience. Next verse, certain persons by swerving from these have wandered away into vain discussion, desiring to be teachers of the law without understanding either what they're saying or the things about which they make confident assertions. There he's describing false teachers. Mm -hmm. And Hymenaeus and Alexander are examples Mm. of these false teachers. Mm. So Christians are warned. One of the evidences that we really are Christians is we heed those warnings. Mm -hmm. And it's not to say that Christians can't wander at times. I believe it's possible, I know it's possible for genuine believers for a time to be confused by false doctrine or for genuine believers for a season to not be living out what they believe, what Mm -hmm. they have come to believe and suffer temporal consequences as a result. But ultimately God's saving work in their lives makes certain that he holds on to them and he doesn't allow them to wander permanently. And so they they remain in the truth, they remain in the Christian faith and they live their lives in a way that reflects that. So I think what he's warning about, the warning is given to believers, but it's about something that characterizes the unbeliever, the false teacher, where they ultimately end up because they walk away from a sound faith and they walk away from a clear conscience. Okay, and so then at the end, that's very helpful. At the end, he says he would hand these people over to Satan. Yeah. Um, This is a phrase that appears, as you know, in 1 Corinthians as well in the context of church discipline. Right. And so what, what does that mean? Hand somebody over to Satan for the destruction of their souls. Yes, yeah, the ultimate outcome of the church discipline process. Mm. So 
as you know, Matthew 18, you're, you're, the first step is one-on-one -on -one confrontation, loving confrontation, restorative confrontation, redemptive confrontation. But that's, that's nonetheless a confrontation. That's step one. You try to win your brother one-on-one. -on -one. If he doesn't hear, you go with two or three. If he doesn't listen, then you tell it to the church. If he doesn't listen to the church, then he is regarded to be an unbeliever. You put him outside the fellowship of the church, and that is the realm of Satan, as it were. Mm -hmm. Within the church, the realm of Christ. Outside mm -hmm. the church, the realm of Satan. And so in that sense, you turn someone over to Satan where they suffer. They mm -hmm. suffer. There's something that's present in the church that's not present outside the church, mm -hmm. and they suffer as a result. Now, if a person who's been put out of the church ultimately repents, yeah. right? Their, their flesh is destroyed, but mm -hmm. the spirit is saved, mm -hmm. and they repent, and they, and they come back then what, what is on display is that they either were a believer or maybe they're converted as mm -hmm. a result of that process. We've had the situation here at Founders who we've walked people through the entire process of church discipline. Mm -hmm. They profess to be Christians. We regarded them as Christians, walked through the steps of church discipline, put them outside the congregation, and then later they were truly converted. Mm -hmm. Some of those people sit in our church to this day. Mm -hmm. yeah, so yeah. the Lord uses that process either for the repentance of genuine believers or the evangelization, the salvation of people who didn't know him, though they professed to know him. Okay, yeah, that's that's really good. So, um, so this isn't a text that necessarily means something that you could lose your salvation. There is a shipwrecking of faith, and that faith is a sort of perception or or um, somebody who claims to have faith, but they genuinely don't, yes. and they're put outside the body. Ex but at the same time, you're saying there is hope for them. Oh, absolutely. To still repent. Yeah, there is. And so even a Hymenaeus and an Alexander, if they were to come to their senses by the grace of God and turn from their false doctrine and turn from their opposition to the gospel, mm -hmm. the Lord would have mercy upon them and mm -hmm. save them. And of course, we don't know the ultimate outcome of those two men, but mm -hmm. we've, we've seen that in our own day where people who were in the wrong way by the grace of God are put in the right way. Mm -hmm. God, God is able to save. Yeah. And so what's the core... Um, uh, the, core, the core part of their distortion of the truth, is it really, I mean, maybe First Timothy 1 again, is it really the gospel that they're getting wrong? Or is that, I wonder, you know, because Paul ties this in Galatians to the Judaizers, that mm. what they're doing is claiming a, a sort of adherence to Jesus, but claiming that you must uphold the law at the same time yeah. in every respect and be circumcised. And Paul says that's a distortion of the gospel at yeah. its core. So is that what's going on here with Absolutely. these two Absolutely, the exact same thing. Yeah, when you talk about swerving into the, into the realm of myths and genealogies and all this mm. sort of thing, it, it is a distortion of the gospel of Christ. Sometimes, as you know, it's by addition. Sometimes it's by subtraction. That's true. Yeah. So when you add to the gospel, you've distorted the gospel. When you remove vital elements of the gospel, you've distorted the gospel, which means you don't have the gospel. Mm -hmm. So these are men who, <clears throat> who actually jettison the gospel, and the result is they crash on the rocks of this world and, the, mm -hmm. and on the rocks of sin. There's destruction. So, you know, it, it is a very, and this is what he's impressing on Timothy to impress upon the church, it is a very serious matter that we cling to the faith mm. and we cling to a conscience that is submissive to the faith. Mm. It is vital that we believe the right things. It is vital that we live what we believe. Mm -hmm. and, and we can go, uh, you know, the beginning point of the crash can ha happen in either of those realms. It usually happens at the same, in both realms, but it can happen because we're distorting truth, or it can happen because we're not living in the light of the truth that we know. Mm -hmm. Both are very dangerous situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a very um, helpful and poignant image to call this the shipwrecking of one's faith. Sure I like is. how you said that it's like, like a crashing against the rocks yeah. and breaking apart one's faith. Mm -hmm. It wasn't there to begin with. Yeah, amen. All right, good. That's helpful. Thank you. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of the Straight Truth Podcast. Now, Straight Truth is listener supported. So if you'd like to find out ways how you can help us to continue to produce this podcast, you can go to our website and find out ways to do that, straighttruth.net. At that website, you'll also find links to all of our previous episodes and our social media channels, so be sure to check it out. Straight Truth is a production of Walking in Grace Ministries, the preaching and teaching ministry of Pastor Richard Caldwell. For more information, go to walkingingrace.org.